Yay! Okay, so this one I am so excited because we are talking about how to make reading the Bible more than just about obtaining knowledge. Knowledge is good. We want to have knowledge. That's a whole nother thing. Um, I'm going to go into like the details of that and the breakdown and everything, but I want to talk about right now what you need for this and what you don't need. So what do you need to read the Bible for more than just knowledge? And what do you not need, but you might have, and you need to do away with it. Okay. And before we get started, I think it's important to address the elephant in the room. Can you see this? My bruised lip. Um, a couple nights ago in the middle of the night, you know, whenever you wake up in the middle of the night, I was just talking to someone about this. You wake up in the middle of the night and you have to go to the bathroom, but you don't get up and you're like, I can probably wait. And then you're like, I can't wait. Well, uh, that happened. And I was like, I just got to get up. And I was so annoyed with myself. <laughs> and so I like got up and was trying to just like go so quick. And I literally like ran into the wall. I'm not kidding. <laughs> I ran to the wall and like yelled out. I don't know how Brandon didn't wake up. I don't know how the babies didn't wake up. And I was so mad. I've kind of been low-key mad at myself for three days. So that's what's going on with my lip. Thankfully, my teeth, I really thought I may have locked, knocked a tooth loose. I started to say lock and knock there together. So anyway, that's what's going on with my bruised lip. Now let's focus on first, what do you need whenever you're trying to make reading the Bible more than just words. You're trying to make it more than just knowledge. You're trying to make it personal, like an actual experience. Okay. Well, the first thing that you need is a notebook and uh, it doesn't have to be cute. It doesn't have to be pink. The one that this is actually an old one that I used. I don't even know. I can look and see. I was trying to remember when I can just literally open. Okay. Like a year ago, the date that I turned to was 5, 24, 22. So about a year ago, use this notebook. Doesn't have to be cute. You can, no, I think I was going to say you can use the notes app on your phone, but I really don't think you can because I think we just get distracted whenever it's just so much easier to get distracted. So you need a notebook. You need a notebook. Um, my husband literally uses composition notebooks. They're 10 cents or something. Well, probably not anymore, <laughs> but they are so, so cheap. Okay. And you need a notebook because uh, we well, can use it as a prayer journal. Definitely. But it's also a safe place to just like write down your thoughts and write out your questions. And so if you're going into your Bible time knowing, okay, I want to hear from the Lord. I want to experience him and I want to remember like what I read, I want to really understand it. And you know that you have something to like write out your thoughts with that is going to motivate you and help you remember to actually not just like read, close your Bible, I'm done, check it off, see you later. But you'll actually like kind of hold yourself accountable with using a notebook. Okay. Second thing, almost dropped it. Second thing that you need is a pen. Okay. And you want a pen similarly because of the notebook, um, but I'm just trying to break these up, you know? Um, you want a pen to, like I mentioned last time, write out a prayer. So I always, always, always encourage people whenever they are reading the Bible to write out a prayer about, God, help me see what you're trying to say to me. And I really think writing it out is helpful. It doesn't guarantee genuineness, and authenticity in your prayer, but I think it helps you slow down when you write out, God, help me understand what you're trying to, like, help me understand, yes, the Bible, but help me understand what you're trying to tell me, okay? The next thing you need, and I'm using my phone to record so I can't show you, but pretend like, and I don't do video editing, <laughs> sorry, I have two babies, um, but you need a dictionary app. On your phone very important you can use real dictionary that's great dictionary app don't use Google here's why because when you use Google you are going to one either start googling like what does this verse mean whatever but you can't do that but you could also get sucked into scrolling right and you get on your phone to look up a word what does it mean and then you get a text and it's like ah oh no I'm sucked in, right? Um, so you need the dictionary app or a dictionary. That way, whenever you are 
you don't Google and then you realize, oh yeah, that other thing I was online shopping about last night, I need to look at that too, right? If you just get a text when you're on the dictionary app, I just feel like being on the app helps your brain remember what you're there for and you just swipe up real quick. Whereas if you're on Google, like, I don't know, I just think our muscle memory of our brain when we're on like Google is to be in like work or accomplish things mode. And so, highly recommend dictionary app. The last thing that you need is a Bible. Oh, I should show you. Please note right here that is a formula or milk stain from you know the early months of the girls' lives. They're ten months now, but get you a hard. This is actually not hardback, but like a you know you can hold it tangible Bible. Same reason. I think that when you're using the Bible app, it's great and it serves a purpose. And you can definitely do that. But I think that we are just, our brains are wired to not focus, I think, as much when we're on a screen, when we're on technology, because so much on technology happens quick and is so fast. Um, and I think having something in paper that we're holding helps just trigger our brain to remember to move slow so we can pay attention to what God is saying to us. Like, what is he trying to tell us? Okay, so that's what you need. You need a notebook, a pen, you need dictionary app or dictionary, and you need a Bible. What do you not need? Okay, what do you need to ditch? So I don't have anything to show you with these, but you don't need, so I'm just gonna sit back at <laughs> my chair. Did you see me like kind of like lean back? Um, I feel like if I sit back though, I need to scoot up. Okay. Um, what you don't need is you don't need, first of all, multiple commentaries. Let me explain this. Is there a place for commentaries? A hundred percent. Okay. We have tons of commentaries. We have study Bibles. We have all of the things. Here's my concern with those. Jen Wilkin talks about this a little bit, some, um, but we tend to just take what they say in the commentaries and we, it just takes our thinking out of it. And we don't want, to, we want commentaries. Sorry, I'm struggling with my thoughts. We want commentaries to help us think, not think for us. That's what I want to say. And I think if we go to commentaries first or only, or that's like our automatic, the commentary tends to think for us and not allow room for the Holy Spirit to guide us. And when we're interacting with the Holy Spirit about a text, initially asking the Holy Spirit to help us understand, then whenever we go to the commentary, we're still interacting with the Holy Spirit and we're listening and we're interacting with the Holy Spirit, which is going to help it be more than just knowledge consumption, but actually obtaining it. Oh, I don't know if you can hear that baby cry. She's teething. Sorry. I mean, we're just... We're just gonna keep rolling. Maybe, maybe not. They're actually both awake. Okay, okay. Sorry for the cat. Shout out to my husband for doing that. I don't know how to do that, but baby was crying, so I had to go. Okay, second thing you don't need is a major moment every single time that you read the Bible, okay? So whenever we're trying to like interact with the Lord, sometimes we can get discouraged because well, I'm trying to read the Bible for more than just knowledge. I'm trying to hear from the Lord. And that doesn't mean though that every single time you read the Bible, he's going to like give you this, ah, you know, like answer exactly what I need. Sometimes he's asking you to just store stuff away um, or even just build discipline or just be present and just be still with him. So you don't have to have some like major huge moment whenever you're reading um, the Bible. And if you're trying to focus on that too much, you're gonna get really, really discouraged. Another thing that's gonna, you need to, you don't need this, okay? You don't need to do this. You don't need to approach Bible reading this way. This is for sure going to lean itself to be about knowledge consumption. If you're trying to prove yourself right, or prove someone else wrong. So maybe you're trying to prove yourself right about some desire or thing that you want and you have heard that God doesn't want you to do it or that the Bible's against it, but you're trying to like prove yourself wrong. You're not gonna be hearing from the Lord. You're no, you don't have a spirit of humility there, okay? Or you're trying to prove yourself right. You don't have a spirit of humility. Same thing if you're out to prove someone wrong. Now this is different than if 
you're having a conversation with someone, like a theological conversation, and you're genuinely trying to help them understand, very different. But proving someone wrong, that's your main goal, you're not really going to be hearing very well, maybe from the Lord or in his spirit to hear. Um, and the last thing you don't need is a give up mentality. So you don't want to, you don't want to give up. Like don't, when you don't hear something correctly, when you don't feel like, I don't want to say hear something correctly, but when you feel like you're not hearing anything, maybe that's a better way to say it. You're like, I'm trying to like get more than just knowledge, but all I'm reading are words. Um, when you are kind of like, where is God at? I'm not finding him. Don't give up. Don't stop reading your Bible. Don't start making it a checklist, okay? Continue on. Lean into the Holy Spirit. The Lord will speak to you through his word, okay? I just, he will because he says he does. That's not even a promise. I can say that and I don't have to feel stress about that because I'm not saying that. Like God says that he's going to use his word to speak to you. And so that's what you need. That's what you don't need. Hopefully this can help set you on the right path to read the Bible in a personal way to interact with the Lord and not just for knowledge. Have a good day.